So today I'm here in our classroom and I'm busy playing with our new Soldomatic AR welding kit. Um, there's a lot of discussions about whether AR or VR is the right way forward for the industry, especially to help remove the cost of training uh, and the cost of materials uh, to get as many people through into dealing with our welder shortage as possible. Um, I'm really impressed by this kit, and if you want to see why, hang around. So here we are at the system itself, and I'll just kind of run you over what we've got. So this system will run all three welding processes. When I say free, there's a bit more, but free. So we've got our standard Big Mag flux core gun here. It's it's a real torch. This feels quite nice. And of course, all that's not happening is we don't have a wire output. What, what we have instead of our nozzle is this uh, QR code nozzle. Uh, and this is what the camera is going to read to overlay the correct texture on top of our torch for one like MIG welding and mag welding. Um, we also have the same deal with a TIG torch. So again, we've got a um, QR codes and that on the TIG torch, uh, a button, and of course we've got a little tungsten there, which is gonna help. A couple of things on this, unfortunately it's not a bendable torch, that would have been nice. Some of when I've been knocking about trying to get the torch in the right position, it's been a bit of a pain, but some torches in reality aren't bendable. Uh, so I'll live with that to a point. Uh, and it would be nice if at some point we could get to a, a place where we actually have a changeable stick out on the tungsten. How you put that in augmented reality as an import, I, that, that's where I get to walk away. <laughs> but it, it would just be nice for me looking at. So we've got our MIG, MAG and our TIG. Uh, what I'm really impressed with is the stick set. Um, so with our uh, stick welding here, we have our sticks which can come out. Uh, we put them into the uh, the torch and that goes into a mortar. Let's have a look at that. So as I'm welding, it's actually going to pull the stick back. So we simulate both the, you know, from my left to right movement because I'm right-handed, uh, but also the burn off of the wire. And it's so, it feels accurate. I'm, I'm really quite impressed with it. But we'll show you this in, in, in a minute. And when we're doing TIG welding to simulate the wire input, so if I've got my torch and that, I've got this, another one of these sticks, which acts as the wire for me to dip into the pool. Of course, it doesn't melt, so we're not really dealing with the, the feed-through sort of technique to get the, the, the wire correct, which is how I, I like to weld. It's that technique of just dipping and you won't have to burn off. But I'm told there is a like a sleeve that is there's a potential where you can do that to, to dip. But um, yeah, I'll I'll live with it as it is. I think it's quite cool by itself anyway. So we've got that. Looking at our joint types, so we have a range of all the standard joints that you, you would really expect to come across in training. So we'll start here with a, a bead on plate sample. Again, loads of QR codes so the system can read and, and over and lay the, the color of the material on top of that. Uh, we've got a T joint, again, nice overlay. And now what I do like with all of these is they've got this, um, this, this background here, this, this matting. So when they're on the table, if you're using a table, they don't move around that much and it feels quite solid. Uh, we have a, a, a frame here, a post, so we can actually put these up into different positions. And that happens from these slots here on either side. All the samples have them. Uh, and there's a clamp that just clamps it into the position we want to hold it, which is which is quite cool. Um, so fill it weld, we've got our butt weld here. Again, uh, and then we've got our pipe and our pipe to plate. So really all the standard joints that would be in a welder qualification test are here for us to be able to, to deal with. So if I slot them back up there, I'm just gonna bring out 
Today we're going to work on a fillet well just because it's, it's easier to kind of show you what's happening with that there. Okay, so we've got all our welding processes, we've got all of our standard welding joints here. Now what we also have is our welding hood, very much like a, it's a standard welding hood with an insert in for the camera instead of a, 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 the glass that we would look through. In that, there is a, a screen there, you can see, which is a direct copy of the screen that comes out of uh, this unit here. And that screen, just so for your benefit, is also attached to a TV over there as well. And I'm running it through a capture device there to my laptop to be able to get the footage of the welding as we, uh, as we run there. So you can, you can see it as a welder, but if you're the instructor, you can have multiple places to be able to be watching the students weld them as they're going, which is, which is really handy. And when they complete the weld to do the playback and then analyze that, being able to have that on a big screen and talk someone through it, I think is, is, is really cool. And that's just an HDMI. It's nothing technical into a standard TV. Um, so like I said, standard, standard helmet. All of these fittings are standard uh, hood sort of headrest so they can be just replaced uh, and, and away we go. Uh, this, this is a cable, it's like a the PlayStation VR type um, cabling, uh, especially the first one that's not wireless. Um, it's, it's there, it's a bit bulky. I'm not gonna say it gets in the way. It would be nice if it was a little bit longer uh, or you know, there was some way of clipping it to your back because it feels sometimes like when I move my head, it gets in the way a bit. But again, I'm being really picky here. Um, I'm, I'm still quite happy with the unit. So I'm very happy with the unit. Even. So I've got my settings. So now we'll jump and I'll, for the captured card, show you in a bit more detail what's on the screen. So when you look at the, the system yourself, I'm in open demo here, but when you turn it on, you're gonna click uh, to sign in and you'll either have an administrator or a student login. Uh, the student logins are, are really cool and really easy to use. As the lecturer, I can go to my laptop and create student profiles and load in certain modules I want those students to do. So they can come log into the system and only see the modules that I want them to work on. Um, I've logged in as administrator and just gone to an open demo so we can just do anything. It's a free sort of well scenario. So we'll click on here, open practice, uh, and then we're going to come down to start open practice. Uh, now I have a couple of things here. So I've got training, which is the samples I've just shown you, or we have advanced. I don't have those samples there specific for automotive and aerospace type parts. Maybe we'll get them in the future in an industry for specific stuff. So yeah, I'm just going to go training. Here's a little sentence. So very quickly, yeah, we've got a difficulty level. Now this is based on uh, if the, the machine is expecting me, be, uh, my torch angle to be between two sort of angles, positive and negative. As we go up, the difficulty is that that allowance gets smaller and smaller and that, that's what makes it harder. It gives you less give to be okay and acceptable. Uh, the guides on the equipment setting here, they are for uh, distance and things like that. Uh, so we can have the set either require me to input welding variables such as amps and volts uh, or wire feed speed, but also we can just say, look, just start with the correct values. So that's what it's currently on at the minute, so we don't have to mess about. But what I can do here is actually produce a WPS, give the student a WPS and say, well, for exercise one, set these values and using the inputs on the machine here for my voltage, my AC, DC, positive, DC, negative, my amperage uh, and my wire feed and the gas levels, they can be set. Now, if they don't set them correctly, you mean you'll get porosity and stuff in the simulation, but you'll also get a, a cross against the the output when we come to analyze the data, because it will say, you know, yes, you welded okay, but your settings were wrong.
Um, so we've got that. So we've got real time guides, which are for travel speed and distance and things like that. I'm just going to leave all of these on so we can show you what they look like while we're welding. We've got slag removal. So if I'm doing stick or flux core, we're going to actually simulate a slag beam on the top, which we have to remove between passes. So having that set is uh, remove slag after all passes are complete means that I'm going to have to press the remove slag button to make sure that it's, it's not there. So we'll just leave that on. And then the last one here, we've got undo welding passes during exercise so if i was to put if i set that to enable and i've welded and i didn't like it i could reverse time and get rid of it i'm going to leave that as disabled so that you know your weld is your weld like it would be out in the in the weld base so we like that now we get to pick our information here so we already said we're going to work up a t-joint but again we can just select all of these things now you can see at the top of that box there where we've got t-joint and the thing we've got a welder and we've got a robotic arm the soldermatic system will interface with robotic systems as well so you know it allows us to to do both and practice with both you know and uh, it'd be really cool if we got a robotic arm in here at some point uh anybody wants to kind of donate one to the school we'll, we'll have it uh, and you could run this all the way through and actually do operate a training for robots at, at the same time but we'll uh, just select t joints for now right we're going to weld in pb so of course it's all european designations here so pb is uh, a nice a nice one to start with so we'll start there now we can have carbon stainless or aluminium now there's some nice things on this which i do appreciate like if i'm in carbon steel where they've cleaned the joint up you can see they're grinding marks, but when I select aluminium, it's brush marks from a wire brush. Uh, all that sort of thing means when you're actually in the system and you're welding away, it gives it that authenticity, it makes it feel real, which I, I, I really like. Uh, so, you know, we'll say aluminium. You know, aluminium costs have gone up something crazy, like 50, 60%, and God knows the last couple of months, of course, with the way the world is nowadays. Um, so being able to practice on aluminium without burning through it is such a cost saver in itself, isn't it? So yeah, we'll go with aluminium. Uh, I can click, select my different settings here. So I'm just going to select 10 mil for my thicknesses. And of course, select my welding process. So let's go with uh, a bit of MIG welding. This I don't get that I've got my positions are nice to ISO, PA, PB, etc. But then all of my uh, process uh, statements are to ASME. So instead of me just being able to say I want to do MIG because I'm doing aluminium, well, I've now got to pick gas metal arc welding, which is the American version of it. But, um, I can only pick one wire. It would be nice to have some more wire settings there, but I, there's one wire I want to use. Uh, I get to choose the other one mil or 1.2 wire diameter. So click that. And then we've got our organ. Again, why am I being forced to select organ? I don't know if it's something I'm doing with the settings and I'll, and I'll find out, but it would be nice to have the opportunity to select an active gas. Because as I'm training, and I want to know that the welders know how to select the gas, not just, well, it's organ and away you go. But we'll, you know, we'll live with that. Um, so there's all the settings I've, I've picked, and we're going next. Now the distance for me to weld. Well, I'll just select my whole 250 mil of that distance. How many welds do I want to do? Well, I will do one pass. We'll do a straight, we won't put a weave in it. It'll be continuous, and I'm going to push. And then we'll go okay. So there's my settings, there's what I want to do. So because I've got it to set, the settings predetermined, then that they're all there. The, the range of amperage and stuff is all there. So now I'm going to say start exercise. That's going to boot up. It takes uh, a couple of seconds just to, to go through and load. The lights turned on on the helmet here, so we, this is getting ready. You hear it click as the cameras come on and, and things power up. And now we can jump to me with the hood on and you can see what, what I'm going to see. 
So now we can put down our first weld. We've got the machine set. We know we want a weld, 10 mil aluminium and a fillet using MIG welding. Um, but at the minute, nothing looks like a 10 mil fillet and MIG welding. So what I'm gonna show you now is what it actually looks like when we apply the AR. So now you guys are looking through my eyes and this is what I can see within the, the helmet. So look, here's my hands, there's the set, you know, I've got all the gear, recording stuff and all of that. And when I look down at the uh, sample, I can now see a fillet weld in aluminium, um, which is quite cool. So that's just reading the QR codes on the sample and, and pushing that out. In the top here, we've got a bit of information. So this is the signal and how good it can see the sample. Sometimes it's a problem because it can't see, uh, it doesn't have enough light and they'll be quite low. The torch it's reading is, is zero, of course, because the torch is across my lap. But if I bring it in, there's, there's my welding torch now with my settings. Um, we've got our voltage in our wire feed speed here. We've got some more, we've got the um, trigger, which is currently set to 2T, but I'm gonna knock that to 4T, which changes there. And I'm using a shade number nine. So as I come in and we get a bit closer, we can see some other things. You can see this, these red arrows fluctuating around me as I move. That's telling me which way I need to be to put the sample into the best position for the camera um, and if you're struggling you can actually zoom in and out so that's me not moving my head but just zoom in as well so I'm going to zoom zoom out and then and then come in now I've got my torch I'll just move this along the table a bit more you can see we've got the settings for both the the angle which is that four circles there and distance so since I'm too far away I need to move in so as I come in I get that green bar which kind of tells me where a happy medium is and I get this little round circle telling me roughly where I'm aiming just so I can get sorted now so when I'm ready I can pull the trigger and I'm on 40 so I'll just pull it once and we go so you see we've got different things here giving us travel speed that I need to go and all that type of thing, if I stop it. We have our weld, and I'm trying to make it not normal. So if I come up, it's these yellow lines tell me the guide where it wants me to go, but I don't have to just go on with that. So if I pull the trigger and start heading up here, I can actually head right off the sample here, yeah? so I can come along and go down as well. And it starts to, to go mad as I pull out of the welding range, but we get a few crazy things happening. So that's roughly how it looks. Now what I'm going to do is just tell it. So what I'm going to do now is just remove this, reset it so we can put a nice weld in and see where it goes. So we, here we are back at our clean sample. That literally took two seconds just to tell it to, to reset. So I'm now back. I don't have to prep more material or clean and all that type of thing. I bring my torch back into where I want to be. And then I'm going to pull the trigger. And it can weld along and try and maintain those variables that it wants me to keep. I'm going to stop there. So there's my uh, my weld going in. I'm going to bring it along. Get it back into position. And there you go. So there's my weld. It's saying if we want to complete, we can press the cancel button, which is over here. So I'm just going to press this button here.
and then we get to view our results. So I'm going to take my screen off and then we can look back at the results of that well. So if I click OK, it's now given me an overview of my well. So it's saying, oh, OK, I ran at 95% overall. Um, you can see it different positions to see my settings were good. Well, I, I told it to set, so I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, I was defect free, and it believes I would pass a bend test had I want to do one. I've got my work angle, travel angle, contact tip to work distance, my travel speed, my aim into, into the joint, and my voltage and if I'm proximity and all that type of thing. So, if we go across one on the right there, we've got the graph graphical representation of what we were doing. So there we've got an output of how constant was I. So you can see my work angle, okay, was kind of getting out. Then I stopped and I moved the sample and then I started again as I moved, but I kind of lost my angle a little bit. Uh, the travel angle, again, wasn't consistent all the way across the part. My contact tip to work distance, you can see, is a little bit fluctuating on the higher side. So it's, it's happy if I'm between 11.7 and 24, and I was about 20.3 all of, as an average. Uh, my travel speed, you can say, that's really erratic. That's going up and down, up and down. But my aim into the joint was pretty much consistent into that joint. Now, this is one of the amazing things about AR and something we really have to engage with is that to give somebody that level of input and results and stuff to work on in a normal welding situation is impossible. You, you just couldn't do that. Uh, but now I can go, right, I need to try and work on my, my angles because as I'm moving around, I'm definitely starting to, to twist. I am, I'm sitting down, I'm not in the best position here for, for where I want, I'm not comfortable, but that's told me that I need to work on the fact that I need to be comfortable. My travel speed's a bit all over the shop, so let's try and pull it in and make that one smooth motion as we go. But that isn't the end of it. What else can I do? Well, I can come along here on, on the uh, thing and look at the 3D version of my weld. I can then spin it and look at it from different angles, which is quite cool. Um, but what's really awesome is if I go to the next one along, I can look at a heat map for my weld. So you've got a few different things here. If I come down to get rid of that, I can move along the weld and you can see in the top left, it's looking at what the cross section area would be like at different parts of my weld. It's also given me the assumed strength of the weld in those different positions. So I can think, well, towards the end, I was a bit uncomfortable, I wasn't pulling right, and it's red. Why was it red? Oh, okay, my angle's wrong, so I need to, need to adjust for that. You can see it's also given my, my throat thickness and my weld sizes and that as well, which is quite which is quite cool. Again, right at the end there where we finish, of course, it's a bit dived in at the end. So, you know, a bit created and it's not got all the filler wire it needs, but that's where it's red there. And you can see what's going to happen to the cross-sectional area. There you go, as it drops off. So it's not very strong at the end, but it's at the end. Um, so again, where would you get this information from? If, if you're against AR or a little bit unsure about AR or even VR, hopefully this type of thing is what blew my mind away. This is what changed the way I viewed it. I was like, oh, okay, it could be all right. But now I know yesterday I did 70 welds and all them 70 welds, I can play with it and say, oh, that's where my student's going to get the output from. That's, that's really cool. So that's what it looks like with Squirty and McMag, but what does it look like with the other welding processes? Well, let's have a look. I bring in my TIG set here. Uh, so again, we've got all the ports and stuff on here. So we're just gonna line that up and screw that into place. I can then go through my settings 
like we did before. So I'll put another T in, PB, we'll make it aluminium as well, 10 mil. Now we're gonna do GTW with my filler, um, argon, next. Let's run for 180 mil this time, one pass, straight, continuous, push, go. Let that load up and now I can show you how this works. So looking through my eyes, again, what we've got here is our sample. I've changed things out, so now it wants me just to look at the sample again and press the button. So it's read everything and it's seen it. So, you know, you've got my, my torch here and it's not, there you go. So we've got a couple of things. I come close. So now we've got a filler wire and we've got our welding torch. What's going to happen? We'll just see if we can to read that a bit better. So again, we've got on the torch, we've got the ins and outs and we've got the angles. So I'll hold it quite close. And I've got my input of my wire. Now the wire doesn't melt of course so i'm more going to be dabbing it as we go but we get the effect and again with the wire it's telling me to bring it in bring it out and the the angle will go red if it wants me to be in, in better positions so i'm on 40 there so i could be able to click this generate my well pool now i'm getting a few architecture issues there so we let it run and then I'm going to put the wire in and away I go. So now that circle you can see on the top left that's turning red. I'm trying to look at everything. So here is the view from um, the headset. Then we've got a TIG now. So if I have, so we had, looking at it, here we've got the same as we had on the MIGMAG with the need to be closer and our angle at the top here. And we're gonna have the same for the wire. So you can see the circle tells me if I'm, I've got the angle of my wire correct and the where I am to the, to the well pool. So I can bring it in there. Let's make it look over a bit. So now this is one of my problems is this doesn't bend. So where I need to be comfortable, it isn't really the best. Um, and the torch is just a bit sort of like stiff, but you know, that is that is life. We don't always get the best torches that we, we want. So I'm just gonna click go. And then add the wire. And there's my well pool. So I even get an aluminium stand with the AC. So we continue to just keep adding the wire into the pool and building along like that. Now, if I was to stick the tungsten into the well pool, oh, I've joined these two. There, well tungsten inclusion came up there. So it's going to highlight a defect as I kind of like jump around and I'm uneven. You see all that tungsten going into that place. But I can start up again and then continue to do my well all the way along. So again, it's, it's remarkable. There's a lot of feedback here. There's a lot of playing. There's a lot of ways of getting people consistent with welding before they actually go on and waste a ton of material before uh, before really understanding what they're what they're doing. So if I put this in here, again see weld tungsten inclusions, move it around, really get them in there. All of that is gonna come up on my feedback as we as we go to do that. So I can bounce along here and we'll get to the end.
So there is me going along and just finishing that off all the way along. And again, we can move the sample and look at it and understand what we've done. And then I can press the cancel button and we will go back to the results. So that's what it looks like with our TIG. But let's look at stick welding now. So stick is a slightly different set, so I don't have to change it. I'm just going to slot this um, this in here, and now a stick. So. So that's what it looked like with TIG, but let's look at a stick. So again, as before, I've just gone through the settings and just changed it out to be carbon steel so we can do stick welding. And as I drop it down onto my screen, we need to just repress the AR button here to get it to read everything. There you go, so there's my carbon steel. And you see now we've got grinding marks to so the brush marks. I've got my electrode, but everything else stays fairly the same. So it wants me to start and move along, along to here. So I'm going to kind of knack this up quite a lot to show you what happens. So um, it wants me to change my angle and then I can arc strike, I can do all sorts of things here. So now I've got a slight inclusion because I welded over the top of a unclean weld. See my off is too close. There's my weld going in like that. Then, then I can move everything around, I can weld up the side. I can do that and let's stop. Now what's happened here is you can see my electrode has actually been pulling back in the motor, so I'm burning off the electrode all the time. If I want to put a new electrode in, I just bring this back to the front and in in away we go. Um, we've got slag on this weld so how do we clean it well we've got a remove slag button on here and when i press it it'll clean the slag off and there's the weld we produced so now i can then start back up So now we've got a weld there. Again, click the remove slag button. There's a weld. Bring this back out. Put a new electrode in. Finish off. And again, if I do this, put a slag inclusion because I didn't clean it. So clean it. So that's you know what a training sample might look like and how the system even though we are in AR it allows me to make those mistakes it's not going to stop and say every weld is a perfect weld and it definitely gives us feedback we looked at what the the settings were like there for the score as well as the, the graphical feedback and the heat maps and all of that this should be able to get somebody from zero to a really good position to be able to weld really quickly. And it's it's got me 
in a position where I'm like, yeah, this is this is how we want to teach. If we are going to make sure we can give the students the most amount of feedback, the most amount of time welding uh, to get that experience without saying, oh, well, you've burned through, <laughs> you know, a thousand pound worth of aluminium and you've got nowhere. No, this, this will allow us to practice and train and do things to then say, we're ready to do the next thing. Um, and when they get on to that, they're less likely to be worried. I think there's the one thing. Let's be honest, when we look at welding and you talk to non-welders, one of the things that scares people, uh, or at least puts them off a bit, is well, what's it going to be like? Uh, how, how am I going to do everything? How am I going to keep my angle as well as when I've got sparks come at me and all this type of thing? If we can remove at least one part of that, which is, well, here's your position and here's your muscle memory in how you're going to move, then they can then come up with, okay, well, I, maybe I understand where my arm needs to be, so now I can walk at the same time. Uh, or at least just be comfortable in what I'm doing before I pr press that button on a real set and get heat, light and sparks and panic. So yeah, so this, I'm a convert, as I say, I am, I can't wait to get more of these sets. I think they'll be great for our students and it definitely fits a, a need within the training world of welding to get people up to standard and I'd love to hear what you guys think because uh, I know it's a charged argument at the minute is people say oh it's the worst thing ever and some say it's the best thing ever I'm definitely more to the second I'm, I'm definitely if not the best at least it's a very good thing so thanks for staying with us this long if you're still watching um, if you would like to talk about this and put your feelings and thoughts about AR and VR into our welding world, drop a comment below and I'll see you in the next one.